I should have brought something like it. No, that's mine. See that, it pushes most of the flush back out. <laughs> <laughs> While fishing, I'm listening to my uncle's Heart of the Mountain by Marcus Girard. It's a nice, cool day. Ice fishing right now while listening to an audiobook. Can't, much, can't get much better. Well, the only thing that could be better is if it would get above zero degrees. While we're back out here, it's about five below zero. Don't know how long it's gonna last. Had one bite so far, or Jordan did. I haven't caught anything. Might be a short outing. video Marvin made a wood box also here I am making some mock steak one of our favorites welcome and thank you for joining us stay tuned all the way to the end when Marvin and I read some of your comments
So your ears don't get hurt. Is it a little quieter now? Is it a little quieter now? I don't know. Here, let's... Is it quieter now? <laughs> Today's project, a wood box. We've been going through a bunch of plastic totes. They don't hold up very well. We're gonna make a wood box that goes down by the stove. The other thing that happened this past week, during the cold snap, I was lugging in so much wood. And as my mom used to say, a lazy mule will work himself to death trying to take one load versus two. Well, I fill up this wood box. It's around 100 pounds and some of it's over, actually it might be well over 100 pounds. Lug that thing up the steps, down the stairs, I tweaked something in my back where I was, you know, I'd walk like this and all of a sudden it would catch. Just getting over it. Today it's doing a lot better. So maybe the boys will have to help carry the wood in. How about that, Jordan? I don't know. So anyway, uh, the issue we have is the wood box down there is, gets broken. It starts leaking. What we're using is leftover materials from the ceiling. We'll probably make it about... 20 inches wide, two foot tall. We're gonna make it 24 inches long because our wood is 20 inches long. It's going to be about two foot tall. Twenty inches wide. This wide, uh, this, this wide and this long. About four inches longer.
to eliminate dirt from coming out the bottom and the sides, I'm going to do the shiplap like I did the ceiling. And that entails taking this bit right here, rabbiting out, put it on this router, and we'll make some shiplap. And this is called a rabbiting bit. For whatever reason, they call it a rabbit. Set this and make a notch halfway, halfway down. So you gotta bring that down until it takes half the material off and makes a notch. does creates an overlap and makes a nice tight seal it's called shiplap I'm gonna be stapling them together just to get it together and then I'm gonna be putting screws in it it's a lot easier to put staples in it to get it together and then come in and put screws in versus trying to screw it all together Let's see if a piece of firewood fits in between there.
25 and 25 and three quarters. I'm looking for. Let's see if I have enough of that. Even the sample piece board that we were putting different colors of stain on when we were trying to figure out what color stain we wanted for the ceiling, that's not trash. It's going to be the bottom of our wood box now. got just leftover boards all we need to do is fill in this gap right here this board has got some rot on this side so I'm gonna cut off about an inch or two and then we'll use the rest of it We have some mismatching wood. I'm just gonna hit it with a sander to even it all out. This is a variable speed polisher. Not sure what sandpaper I have on there. We'll find out. box that's going to get as much beating as normal the staples are not going to hold so I just use the staples to get it together hold it in place now we're going back and putting all the screws in this is what's actually going to hold it together Next step is to stain it after that, we varnish it. Mary had the idea of maybe putting some caster wheels underneath it to roll it around. Pretty good idea. Um, I might have to go pick some up. I don't have the color stain that I want for this, so that's gonna have to wait till tomorrow. It's late tonight. 
Might just call it a day and come back tomorrow. We're mixing different stains together to try to get the color that we want. So that's a wrap on the stain, got to let this dry. Something to keep in mind when you're doing rough cut. The color is always quite a bit darker than on a piece of wood that's been completely sanded smooth. The rough cut absorbs it, turns out a lot darker. Like right here I sanded it more and that's quite a bit lighter. Cover that up, try to make it blend in a little bit. Another day or so of letting this dry, we'll start putting varnish on here. We're on to the next step, getting some varnish on here. This is probably going to take three or four coats due to the fact that the wood is so porous and rough. It's the end of the week, a little bit of a recap, read some comments. It's still winter, as you guys can see. The snow is, well, I think, I mean, it's over the top of my boots, so it's pretty much knee deep at this point. I think the cold is, the worst part is over. Um, it's definitely been colder than I've ever seen it. It was recorded to be negative 48 in Libby. I don't know if my thermometer is accurate. I have a mercury thermometer. Those are known to be fairly accurate. Mine showed negative 50. There's a customer that I did some work for that lives about an hour north of here in a section that we call the Yak. Um, he sent me a photo of his thermometer and it was 65 below. Oh, wow. That's cold. Higher elevation. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was definitely, definitely on the chilly side. But some of the fun things uh, the guys have been doing, you've been ice fishing? A little bit. Went out again today. Boy, caught some decent sized minnows. That's about <laughs> all. Um, yeah, so some of your comments got quite a few comments on the yes. ceiling. Thank you so much. Nothing against just a regular ceiling, but I wanted something a little bit different kind of the rustic cabin feel when you walk in with the cathedral ceiling on the entrance that we built there. If So if there's a chance you guys don't know what we're talking about, go back and watch one of our previous videos where I put up the ceiling. Again, I got this lumber from a customer I did some work for. It has a sawmill that is circular saw. Most of the sawmills nowadays are band sawmill. So you just have straight lines going through the lumber. The circular saw, is a much more unique rustic look things uh the look that you would see in older buildings before the band sauce came out so decided that's the look we're going to go with for there again very lightly sanded it stained it 
So the saw marks are probably 90% of those saw marks are still in there. So one comment from Belly Full of Bad Berries. I would be interested in knowing how that name came about. <laughs> belly Full of Bad Berries. Now that's Marvin's name. the best. I always love his explanations. He would make a great teacher. Yeah, for sure. Marvin is the teacher. He's got a gift for explaining things and bringing out a point. Yeah. I want to know the details of how it works and why it works that way and why people came to that conclusion versus someone who's just cut and dried, broad sweep of a brush with no details. Um, yeah, details is very important to me. And I am more the opposite. Some of you who may watch my videos, when I cook and bake, I do a lot of dumping without measuring. <laughs> And amazingly, it often turns out. But. <laughs> <laughs> Jeanette Bradbury mentioned about cutting the wood all by myself. Um, yeah, I'm, for the most part, I've been, I'm used to kind of working by myself. So. The boys help too. Yeah. They do the a boy, lot. The boys, they, yeah. to, but that particular day, I knew that the cold weather was coming. The boys were in school. Mm -hmm. And decided I'm gonna and there was snow coming too. So decided I'm gonna cut a bunch of firewood again something I usually shoot for or strive for is a Dry place for the firewood do that get it all done in the summer and in the fall So that I don't have to go cut firewood in the winter time, but it does happen Thankfully, I have a whole log truck full of logs there Not necessarily logs but stuff that's too small for milling for the most part. So I just have a pile I can go and cut out of, which is really, really nice. I don't have to go out to the woods and log. So, yeah. Susie Cox, 84135. Hey guys, great video. The food looks so good. The new ceiling is awesome. I love seeing the little guy sledding and Morgan's nice catch. Good job, Morgan. Stay safe and warm. Blessings, Susie. Thank you, Susie. I love reading your comment. Melissa Lee commented, I think from Oklahoma. Here in Oklahoma, it's negative 10 wind chill. We got a high temperature of 11 tomorrow. It's very unusual weather for us. It's not fun. Love your video. Such a nice family. Thank you for sharing with us. God bless. So depending on what part of the country you are, it's just as cold as it was here. She said minus 10 wind chill. The nice thing around here, we don't have much wind at all. Yeah. It's very wind still, and it's usually dry. Those three days, when it was that cold, the morning that it was the coldest, I went outside, the smoke in our chimney was going straight up and then just disappearing. And then about close to noon, there was enough of a breeze that started going a little bit to the side. But it's not like open land where it's blowing sideways. Uh, thank you, Pam Moon, for commenting. Hi, sweet family. It was good to see y'all. Love the ceiling. Wow, gorgeous. Good old home cooking. Looks so good. Man, I wish I liked fish, but nope, can't go there. Laugh out loud. That's okay. <laughs> now I'm getting better at eating deer. Hey, it's not for everyone. My wife's you know, family, for the most part, doesn't like fish. You're, I'm with you, Pam. I don't much care for fish either. I can eat it but it's not my favorite. I was raised on rabbit, squirrel, beef and pork. That sounds interesting. And now I can't even eat rabbit and squirrel. It is what it is, I guess, huh? Laugh out loud, stay safe, warm, and God bless each one of you. Thank you, Pam. Now that's interesting, rabbit and squirrel. Now I've had rabbit, I'm not sure if I've had squirrel. It's been a while. The squirrel we have out here in our part of the country are not, they're not worth cleaning. Like where I grew up at, we had the bigger, the red squirrel, the gray squirrel, and the, and the, the fox squirrels. And those are big enough that they're worth cleaning. We have the little pine squirrels here, which are just a shade bigger than a chipmunk. They're, they're just not worth cleaning. Victoria Greenway from the Blue Ridge Mountains. Oh Virginia. my goodness. All the way on the other side wow. of the country. Love the look of the ceiling. I'm sure you'll be glad when it's complete. Yes, we will. The cake looks delicious. No ice fishing for me. Bless y'all. Thank you so much for commenting on that. 
The Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. I've yeah. never been to the state of Virginia. I'm not sure that I have either, but I bet it's probably very beautiful in the fall with all the trees. I've been to every state west of the Mississippi and probably a third of them on the east side of the Mississippi. I have been to Alaska, I have not been to Hawaii. Christine Schwartz, you wrote, awesome video. I love your new ceiling. Yes, it was a concern about the water pipes freezing. We are having pretty cold weather too, more than we did in a long time. With the wind chill, it, it will be way below zero too. Well, stay safe and warm. Thank you for sharing this with us. Thank you, Christine. Nana Paw Paw, 1160. Now read that again. Nanny Paw Paw. <laughs> Now that is a name, Nanny Paw Paw. They must be from the South. Yeah, huh. I sure enjoy your videos and your sister in Alaska. It's supposed to get cold down here in Alabama. Ah, yes. yes, sir. <laughs> Next week, I think we may get a little ice. The children and grandchildren always enjoy when we do get a little snow, maybe Every five to ten years, we would not know how to live if we got a lot of snow. Good thing we live out in the country and we have a fireplace extra to heat by. Yeah, kind of an interesting comment because you're not used to it when you get it. You don't know how to deal with it because you're not used to it. Nothing wrong with that. It's just that we live here and we deal with it all the time. My One of my brothers moved from Wisconsin down to Kentucky. And he said they had an unusually cold year and they got like five, six inches of snow. And he said everything pretty much stopped. People didn't, uh, for the, number one, the county was not even equipped with adequate plows to clear the roads. Business owners got a hold of a bunch of salt and just started dumping salt on their sidewalks uh, before they plowed. And he said it, it was amazing to see because people were just not used to dealing with it. Yes. Yeah, I don't think, I don't know if I could ha if I could take the heat that you guys have in Alabama during the summertime anyway. The heat with the humidity. Oh, wow. yes, would bother me. So, Faye Potts, you wrote, glad you're starting a new chapter on your family channel. We enjoy the building, gardening, cooking, and the Christian fellowship going on in every aspect of your lives. Thank you for being a witness for Christ. Yes, that is definitely something we strive for. Yes, being a witness is something that, well, quite frankly, we might be the only scripture or Bible that certain people get exposed to. So if I can pronounce this right, Givander Nagel, you wrote, and I translate, thank you, greetings from, it's either Guy or Guy Holland. Wow, across the pond. Yeah. Thank you for thank commenting. You for watching. We wish you all the best. It's amazing to me. When we create these videos, I we're just in our own little world and it's sometimes just amazing when you realize that people from Africa, Australia, Germany, Switzerland are watching our channel. So user-rq5yx8rq1k you commented, no extra insulation between the ceiling and the roof. No, I'm not sure if you're familiar at all with spray foam. Spray foam is a closed cell. It has a lot of very tiny cells. There's zero air transfer. I sprayed five inches in that ceiling and five inches of spray foam is equivalent to, I believe about 16 inches of fiberglass. Um, like I said, it's closed, it's completely sealed off, there's no air transfer. Basically, that, so just so everyone can understand, the volume of, of insulation you need in spray foam versus fiberglass insulation or maybe cellulose, I can put about this much spray foam in there and to get the same R value, insulation value, you're gonna need approximately this much fiberglass. So even though it looks like there's not much insulation in there, the rest of this house has a different type of insulation. The spray foam in the entrance, the snow stays on that section. 
the other section of the house melts off sooner. So I'm another thing I'm going to be doing next summer is putting more insulation in there. So yeah, the yeah. five inches of spray foam is adequate for the climate that we're in. Even though it doesn't look very thick, it's it's generally what we spray in the ceilings. So Lismos 100, you commented, I am not good in English writing. I am from Switzerland. I love your videos. Greetings. So Julia Bauman, Marcus has a book to finish. Let him use the power auger. Well, I offered it to him, but I don't think he quite wanted to admit that it worked quite as well as it did. Um, some of you guys might have heard in the video, he wanted an eight inch hole. All the fish we caught that day could have came through a two inch hole. Yeah, they were very small. Yeah. So Marilyn Frazier, 4925, you wrote, your children are having so much fun. Marvin is a real worker. The ceiling turned out really nice. Family should always be first. Your fried chicken looks delicious. Fishing is a great hobby and the fish is delicious. Thank you, Marilyn, for your comment. Well, thank you guys for all your comments. It was so interesting to read them and go through them and hear about where you live and what you do. And stay tuned for our next video. And please, if you like our content, like, subscribe, make sure to leave a comment. And who knows, we may read your comment on our next video. That's right, you may hear your name. And if you do leave a comment, tell us about yourself, where you live, the things that you like. Also, give us a heads up on what part of the, of the videos that we're putting out that you enjoy cooking the family hanging out doing stuff yeah we'd love to hear from you guys yeah. Hyperdrive. And do this even faster. And as you see, and as you see, we have a toilet. That's, uh, that's icy fishing with Jerome.